evening. Pastors Hank and Brenda here from our heart to your home Wednesday night, the day before, Brenda, our big conference That's tomorrow. That's right. That's September why we're coming 15th. online tonight because everybody is at the arena preparing and getting everything set up for tomorrow's big event. Yeah. And of course, you still have time to come if you have not thought about it. Maybe you're still debating. Maybe you weren't sure if you could get off work. I don't know, but you can still register. It's completely free. Openingtheheavens.org. Make sure you get there. And Hank, I'm excited I'm because excited. it's going to be yeah. powerful. I feel like God is going to move mm -hmm. in that arena and yeah. touch people. It's just going to be amazing. Well, and again, like Brenda said, there is still time for you to come in person. I've been praying for 7,000 of you in person to come and if you're saying, well, hey, you know, Pastor Hank and Brenda, we can't uh, get there. You can join us online. It's free. You don't have to register. So we'll look forward to seeing you online. And uh, if you're worried about the gas prices and all that, you know what? Rent a horse. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheaper, and you can get here to Omaha, and uh, that's how they used to do it in the olden days. You know that, Brenda? That's how they did it in the olden days. Uh, I guess so. Well, yep. hopefully we progress. But you ever okay. had that, though? You remember talking to your grandparents and all that, and they'd get around, they'd talk about the good old days, and I yeah, never could did. figure out why it was called the good old days when they had no fire, they had no air conditioner. Air conditioner. Let's they try that. Walked up. Yeah, uh, what did you say? Walked up uh, hills both ways to school for miles and miles. But they were the good old days. I used to think, Grandpa, it doesn't sound like the good old days to me. Yeah, I know. I like some of the modern conveniences, yeah. that's for sure. You know, you know what's amazing is they were, uh, a while back, they were showing a telephone. You remember those rotary phones? Is that what they call them, rotary? Yes. Where you had to dial. How many remember those? And then you would forget the number and you'd let it go. And it'd spin back and you'd have to start all over again because you couldn't remember the number. Yeah, I do. That, so I did see, but thing. some of you may not even I know what a rotary phone is. I saw a thing online where they took uh, some millennials or Gen Zers <laughs> to see if they knew how to dial on what a rotary, the and they didn't know they how. They didn't know how to do. It. They didn't I know how bet to do some it. of you wouldn't know how either. Well, one thing that we want to do, and I'm going to let some of you still come on, is um, I did did have some props, and Brenda has no clue what they are because I always bring props on our heart to your home. Yes, and it goes with the content, <laughs> sweetheart. Okay. Where do you see what I'm I scared? Brought? Where All do you right. see what I brought? But in the meantime, I do want to talk about uh, some of our children's material, and the reason I want to do this is, man, there's so many. Is it's we're going to let some people collection. get on, and we've got a great message that I want to share with Brenda here today. We're going to talk about how to walk and live in the spirit. And it's based on Galatians 5, where we're going to look at that as our text in just a moment, where uh, we're to uh, live in the spirit, but also walk in the spirit. Well, that's how right. do you do that? And uh, we're going to look at the life of Jesus. So that's coming in just a moment. Brenda, I'm excited about uh, your, and I'll let you talk about this because I'll say it. I love watching Brenda write these books because she puts her whole heart into it. She seeks God. And this one is for for kids, it's not just so parents can decree these. These are for your child to actually decree them. Well, so you kind of wrote it in kid form. Well, just so Is people that, know, in case somebody yeah. didn't, it's they maybe just didn't understand what for I the said. first time. Okay, you you're just it. joining for the first time. I write a series of declaration books. They're books with filled with yeah. prayers, or we call them decrees, with a scripture and a little short exhortation or a teaching. Mm -hmm. And I've done two. I did the original daily decree and then daily decrees for family blessing and breakthrough. And this is the newest one for the kids. Yeah, and I feel like great. with all that's been going on, this next generation, we need to give them that's equipment good. and tools to empower them. So, you know, and I cover all sorts of fun things in here on um, how to, you know, not be afraid of the dark <laughs> at this country. All right, I'm going to decree I talk that. About, <laughs> yes, no, I'm not afraid of the you dark. Know, just, to be, just to be cute. But <laughs> no, I, nice there's, um, you know, good things happening, being successful in school, self-confidence, all of the things I did, you know, on divine healing, being healthy, um, just a number of things, uh, overcoming fear, mm -hmm. anxiety, all of those things, things that are important to adults too. So adults can use this, but also for children. And I feel like this next generation of young people need and it's in a, language, a tool that they can use. Well, it's in words that they can use. I mean, they're not going to get up and try to, you right. know, decree 
I will not be exasperated, <laughs> frustrated, you know, all these big words. You know, that nobody really knows Very what they simple. mean. You know, so. simple, but I love you and I love this book. Yeah, good. This is a great book. So, Daily Decrees for Kids, make sure you get that. You can go out to uh, hankandbrenda.org. And also, while we're at that, um, I want to talk about uh, OneVoiceTV.net. And uh, this is very important that you go out to our, our very own streaming network, OneVoiceTV.net. And the reason why, you know, God spoke to me, Brenda. Uh, he dealt with me. He said, why do you think that Jesus would go out in a boat you know, they'd row him out onto the lake a little bit and he'd get in the boat and then he would begin to preach and minister. And then other times you'd see him, he'd go and sit down on a rock or, you know, he would, you know, travel and speak uh, on a hill or something like that. It's because in the temple, when he would speak, <clears throat> excuse me, the Pharisees would come to him and they would literally try to censor him. And that's mm -hmm. what we've been seeing. Come on, right, right. you know, with this culture, this woke uh, generation and all the different social media venues out there. There's many of them. And, and some are just outright trying to steal our freedom of speech. If you say things that are true, <laughs> they will, uh, you know, censor you. Uh, and then they will, you know, reprimand, just spank your little hands. If you say things, you know, that uh, get them all riled up. The 24 hour ban, 24 the hour ban, you know, you know, <laughs> right. So I think we've had them all. <laughs> we've had them all, but here's the thing. It's because we tell the truth. And we'll continue. But Jesus was not subject to the censorship and control of the Pharisees that, you know, were in the in the synagogue and whatsoever. So when he went out in the boat or when he went out and sat on a rock or a hill, he literally, this is what the Lord said, he was establishing his own platform. That's and good. that's what we've done. So I say this because sometimes, you know, maybe if there's a glitch, you know, or uh, some of the social media sites are starting now to, you know, uh, put glitches in there because they don't like what you say. So you get frustrated and you just stop watching. Well, that won't happen at OneVoiceTV.net. Uh, OneVoiceTV.net. You can watch us on Sundays. You can watch us on Wednesdays. But here's what's even amazing. You can go back and watch all of the prophetic pulses. You can watch all of your daily decrees that right. you do in the morning. You can watch all yes. of our Sunday services. And uh, we're going to start having some other people join on One Voice uh, TV. So you're going to see some of your favorite um, shows and different things. And some things that are going to be... Flashpoint's going to Flashpoint. Come, you know? And some things are going to be exclusive just to, um, you know, onevoicetv.net. So I want to tell you about that. Lastly, hey, I just wrote a new Captain Zepto book. This one's called The Cosmic Inflation. Why am I taking so much time? Don't put in the comments, get to the content. This is content. We are absolutely taking back a generation That's right. uh, of children. They have been exploited. Come on, they have been attacked by That's the enemy. Right. Yes. And it's worth taking a few minutes of our time tonight to give you alternatives in the garbage that's out there. And so not only that, true. we put a lot of heart, time, and prayer in what we do here at One Voice Ministries for you, for a child that maybe is of your own or that you know. But this is an hilarious book, Brenda. I enjoyed you, it. You actually I, I read, read it one I read the whole night. thing laying in bed at night. And I was night. snoring. I, I didn't even know I it, read the whole, whole book. It's this very cute. And I'll be honest, these are... A great yeah. way to give gifts to your this kids is the or at Christmas, newest one Christmas out of time. You have oh, a I have a Christmas one. one. Christmas is coming. This one is hilarious about Christmas. I thought yes. about writing a sequel to it. This is the first one. So these are all our comic books, Captain Zepto. Make sure that you can get it. You can go out to hankandbrenda.org and uh, all of the children's books will be available there. And then lastly, I uh, also have a Captain Zepto. We just made this. You can get a Captain Zepto coloring and activity book. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. Brenda, you look like Lieutenant Zindi. I think be. she's a fox. All right. Anyway, Brenda's a fox. All right. And then we have Much Vin Milo. That's the other. That's for smaller kids coloring activity book. We have, and then, of course, um, these are the children's books that I've written for the younger kids. And more coming. And there's another one coming out, Treehouse SSO. It's a secret what SSO means. You'll have to find out. And then lastly, I love this book. It's called The Supernatural Power of Jesus' Blood. You know why I love it, Brenda? Because the blood of Jesus oh, there's is, no greater never love. loses its power. Yes, and there's no greater love than this, that God, Jesus, set, uh, laid his life down for us, his friends, and for all mankind. And this is a powerful book on the blood. It teaches you 
what happened with Jesus' shed blood, but also the scripture talks about the sprinkling of the blood. And when people for years have said, I plead the blood, what does that mean? I've had people say, well, you can't plead the blood. Oh, yes, you can. If you understand the blood of sprinkling, because you understand the shed blood of Jesus, and then the scripture says the, uh, the sprinkled blood, the sprinkled blood is actually pleading the blood. And so I show you that. And then I also talk about why does the devil attack speaking in tongues so much? It's because it's connected to the blood. Well, so make and sure let me you just get that. Say, say Hankandbrenda.org. Let me, yeah. let me make a comment about, and it's really important uh, to get a hold of a revelation of the blood of Jesus, yeah, Hank, because a lot of people, they don't understand they're not confident in their ability That's to true. stand up against the works of the devil. And if you have any feeling like, you know, you maybe you feel attacked, you feel like, you know, yeah. the demons are, you know, releasing assignments mm-hmm. against your life. A confidence in the blood of Jesus will help you be an overcomer. Is. This is one of the best revelations we can have as a believer is a confidence in all of the benefits, not just that it forgives Mm -hmm. our sins, but all the benefits of his blood. When you know it, when you, once you know it, then you know that there's not any battle you can't overcome. That's true. And I tell you what, and Brenda, I think this book, no, I know this book on the blood is so deep, but yet so simple. It is going to revolutionize your life. And so get that today, hankandbrenda.org. All right, I want us to open our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to talk about walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit. Matthew, can you come here? Brenda, you don't even know about this. So here's my prop that's going to set up what we're going to talk about. All right, first of all, Matt, bring me the green thing that's Our in the bag. Matt is the prop so Matthew's guy. coming. He's coming with the props. Look at this. Here he comes. Oh, no. All right, here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. All right, Matt, the green thing that's in the bag. Here it is right here. All right, look at this. Brenda, do you know how many, it's September 14th. Do you know how many months until Christmas? About three. About three. That's right, Brenda. There's still time to get Hank some stuff. Okay. (laughs) And how do we shop? Here's how we shop. We go online. We go online. Whatever site. Whatever Yep. We buy what we want to buy, uh-huh. and then when it arrives at the door, we show the other person, and we say, look at what you bought that's me. That's right. That's it. That's what that's makes it. Brenda. Thank you for this gift. And that's what makes Brenda a train expert. That's right. HO trains, model trains. Brenda picks them out, right? Sure. Yeah, Actually, so, I pick them out. So here's the thing. We've been <laughs> married 33 years, yeah. and I, I just think, why... Am I out there trying to pick out something? I mean, it doesn't mean we never buy each other a surprise yeah, yeah, gift. Right. We do do no, that do sometimes. That, I mean. But I have found out, you know, when you get to be older, <laughs> older. you get more She's determined about what you want and don't want. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's it, it. It is true. You don't keep junk yeah. anymore. So and, you, know, you just want to buy what you want. Right. And that's it. And there's people, <laughs> Brenda. I remember, you know, back before we would just, you know, pick out something and then I'd say, hey, Brenda, thank you for buying this. Merry Christmas, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You know, I would watch, you know, guys in the store just absolutely sweating, trying to find the perfect gift for their wife, take the pressure off each other. You know, Um, that's why I just told our kids, I said, you know, to Matthew and John, I said, John, Matthew, I mean, John's 22, Matthew's 29. I'm like, I'm not shopping for you anymore. Your Christmas gifts are cash. And I just give them money and let them buy what they want. But you learned a long time ago. Don't, and I like those don't try to buy clothes for me. Don't, no. don't even try it. No. Don't even try it. Don't, don't even, even try it. So that's it. it and I wouldn't work. buy clothes for you because it, they, well, no. I might occasionally. Pastor Doji, he, in our church, he buys my clothes, picks them out. He does a great job. Listen, I'm like, okay. Yeah. So keeps me looking young. There yeah, you go. All right. So All right. here's the thing. Matthew, bring the other ones, please. Drum rolled. All right. So we're going to talk about walking in the spirit. Brenda, living in the spirit. Now, do you know what these are, guys? These are they're creepy. They're not creepy. These are man bear slippers. Come on, no better way to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, than with man bear slippers, Brenda. Do you like these? Come just, on, put them in the comments. Of course you do. I bought them at a restaurant. I bought them at a restaurant. Oh my goodness, a it's a grizzly called. bear restaurant. Yeah, it's or a, it, it's an incredible. They got food. Uh, all that and you they can They had eat. the bear so, slipper, bear so slippers. We have three German shepherds, as you know. So talking about walking in the spirit, living in the spirit. 
They bark at these. It's because they're creepy. They, <laughs> no, they, it's they, not. They, they think it's an actual creepy. bear, Brenda. No, they don't. They yes, think they it's do. a monster. They think it's an attacker. They, they think it's these... an invader, an alien. Anyway, I'm going to keep wearing them, and I'm excited because the season where you wear them is coming upon us, and there's no better way to walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit. Look, Look at, at our text. Go, honey. The, the claws but look that's like what little bears horns. Have. Little horns. They're not horns, honey. Those are claws. There's a difference between <laughs> horns and claws. The Bible says, I'm going to Scripture to prove my point. This I say, walk in the Spirit. Come on, with your bear slippers, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, I'm going to take these bear slippers off, but you do get the point that that's what we're going to talk about. Walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. I don't want to be overbearing. But I did want to bring these on about walking in the Spirit so that you understand the bare necessities of life. There we go. All right, there you go. Bye. Okay, now let's get into this. I say this, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's keep reading. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. All right, stop right there. Part of the way to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, is you have to understand that your flesh lusts. We know that. Obviously, right. the Bible talks about that, sensuality, different things. It, it lusts for, you know, um, food, you know, M&Ms, ice cream, <laughs> all those things I love. I'm on the keto diet, by the way. You know what that is? I, keto according to Hank. Keep eating the obvious. So there you go. Ice cream and M&M's. Yeah, ice cream and M&M's. That's right. keto diet. That's but here's the thing. Your flesh lusts, but people don't understand this. Right. That scripture says your spirit lusts. Yes. So how would you define your spirit lusting? Well, it's hunger to pray. Hunger to pray. Your, your spirit will always tell you you should get up earlier and get a little time with the Lord. Yeah, that's true. Uh, your spirit will it's push you to go read the word of God. Your, your spirit will be the voice inside you that'll say, you need to be in church. Mm -hmm. That is the spirit lusting. And we need to give in to that. True. We need to follow that. So Jesus said, the spirit is willing. Yeah. The spirit, that's the, the spirit lusting. Weak. The spirit yeah. is hungry yeah. to uh, build a closer relationship that's to true. God. Wow. So, okay. Verse 17 again, the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh lusts against the spirit. The reason why people do not walk and live in the spirit is because whichever one you feed the most is the yes. one that's going to win. In that's other words, it. if you're just answering the lust of your flesh all the time, giving your flesh what you want, you will never live and walk really strong in the spirit at all. That's true. So that's what it says. And these things are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. So or that, the things that your spirit wants. Let's that's just exactly and, right. And say that. And Hank, I think it is important if I could just comment yeah. on that scripture. It's important to highlight the fact that um, when it says the flesh lusts, it doesn't have to be sinful things. No, it doesn't have to be. It can just be natural things that you get so consumed by. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's chores at the house or busy at work, that's all true. of the things that we do in the natural where there's not time to build up our spirit. That's really And good. I think sometimes we think the flesh lusting mm -hmm. is a sinful issue. It isn't always mm -hmm. a sinful issue. It can just be that your schedule is so packed that mm -hmm. you've allowed the lust of the flesh or the desires of the time. flesh to take over. Yeah. That's it. You're right. We in, in a, Exactly. We don't give time for the things of the spirit. You know, now look at verse 25, because this is what it also says in Galatians. It says, if we live in the spirit, so we are to live in the spirit. Yes, okay? right. Let us also walk in the spirit. So I, I, I want to bring it down to how do we then walk in the spirit? How do we then live in the spirit? So as I was preparing this with Brenda, we, we really began to look at, okay, well, we could take, you know, people's lives and, and break it down that way. But Brenda and I both felt as we were preparing this that there's no greater example of a person that lived in the spirit, walked in the spirit their whole life than Jesus. That's true. So look at Hebrews chapter 12. He's our example. Look at what it says. Hebrews chapter 12, verse two says that we are to look unto Jesus. So we're gonna look at Jesus, his life on how we walked in the spirit, how we lived in the spirit, because mm -hmm. he is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
And it's not just, you know, faith to believe that your prayers are going to be answered. You know, right. you believe that you receive. Yeah, that is faith. This is looking unto Jesus regarding your Christian faith, your Christian walk, your Christian lifestyle. And from Jesus, you're going to discover how to walk in the spirit and and live in the spirit. Okay, mm -hmm. we're not coming so out, right. you know, to enjoy the pleasure of, of, of sin for a season, or we're not gonna be people of the flesh, you know, who have no self-control, uh, we're angry, we're moody, you know, we complain. Okay, that's not the life or the walk of the spirit. And I think, can I just comment, sure. Hank, on this as we get into this talking about Jesus, it's important to understand that walking in the spirit isn't some ethereal, you know, being caught up in the spirit. There's a difference when you look at the book of Revelation where John was caught up yeah, right. into the spirit. That's a walking in the spirit. I have this in the margin of my Bible is mm. every day making spiritual choices. That's really good. Right it's now. deciding that you're going to live a life that's pursuing spiritual things. So I think we need to clarify that's that because sometimes in prophetic, we're yeah, right. you know, people that, that live life in a spiritual focus, mm -hmm. but it's not just being caught up in the spirit as we see in visions and dreams right. and spiritual experiences. It's a, this we're talking today yeah, about choosing. Now it can lead to those sure. things. And, yeah. Well, it will. You know, because last days, the Bible yeah. says God will pour out his spirit yeah. on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. But I think the church right now is in a place with where the culture's gone mm -hmm. is learning how, because the culture is pulling so hard against our Christian values, uh, against our belief systems, they're trying to break down our understanding of truth, and it's driving every day through all of these things we see on our That's phones good. and devices. So what Hank and I want to give you today is to help you come back to a spiritual lifestyle mm -hmm. choice that counters That's all right. of that, that stuff out there that's infiltrating are thinking. Yeah, because people are, are, are very touchy today. Have you yeah. noticed that? They're angry, uh, they're in fear, uh, you know, they, they're they over opinionated, they're rude, you know. There's just a lot of uh, manifestations or what the scripture calls, um, you know, the, the flesh, the right. works of the right. flesh or, right. or acting in the flesh. But one of the ways, before we look at Jesus, that I will tell you how to walk and live in the spirit is um, there's a scripture verse actually in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 16. And it, it says that every morning, Brenda, God would provide heavenly manna. And yes, it was a, it was from heaven. So it came from the spirit and it manifested into the natural. And it was this little wafer. Uh, I bet it tasted amazing because anything that God gives, all good and perfect gifts comes from God, the father of lights. And so it, I bet it tasted amazing. And uh, they would get up every morning and they would have this heavenly spiritual food that would show up. And then they got to the point where they didn't want spiritual food. They didn't sure. want the life That's of the spirit. They good. didn't want the walk of the spirit to go out and walk and collect the spiritual food. So they didn't want to live in the spirit. They didn't want to walk in the spirit. So guess what they did? they began to do what we saw in our text, Galatians 5. We want flesh. We want flesh. And so guess what? There was something very foul about their fleshly request. It was so foul that God said, all right, I'm going to rain down quail. Do you get that foul? <laughs> I'm going to rain down quail until it, it's between your teeth and you've had enough of the flesh. And really, sometimes God will do that with us when it comes to walking in the spirit or living in the spirit is, you know, if you want to live a lifestyle of flesh, he'll let you have it between your teeth until finally you realize, you know what, God, I just need to surrender. I don't want to be a carnal Christian. I don't want to be an angry Christian. I don't want to be moody Christian. I don't want to be one that, you know, has a short wick and I just snap at people, you know, my spouse, my wife and others. I'm a keyboard warrior that's got to let everybody know my opinion. Oh, right. You know, that, that means quails between your teeth. And what you've got to do is shift back and start this example. And I think it's Exodus 16, uh, it's, I think it's around verse 13 And God somewhere. let them have it long enough That's until right. they were miserable They were with miserable it. with it. That's it. The key is manna in the morning, flesh at night. In other words, don't live your whole life. Like Brenda said, it doesn't have to be bad flesh. It just means that you're just, 
you're so busy with all the stuff that you're it's doing. It's void of the spirit. It's void of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So again, when they would go out and collect that man in the morning, it was walking and living in the spirit. And that's the ultimate absolute priority that you have to establish in your life. I'm going to be a spiritual person. I'm going to live in the spirit. And if somebody makes me mad, I'm not going to respond and react and become fleshy. And boy, if people would just learn to live and walk in the spirit, we would not have the division that we have in our nation among Christians, let alone in the body of Christ. All well, right, and I think, Hank, let me say, and I, I, we have so much to share, but I think it's important. And a short time to get there. This is very, <laughs> very important it because is. right now, Everything in the culture is trying to keep people in the flesh. It is trying. It's, it's, it, yeah. The devil's almost like tempting and trying to pull us toward the carnality of this mm -hmm. current society and this current culture. And it's, and it's tempting to mm -hmm. go there because even in things as we attempt to stand up for truth, yeah. Uh, Christians are becoming more judgmental. They're calling sure. each other out. They're yeah. because that's the way the culture is doing things. It you know, is. this is the way it's the true. political world does things. So, that's right. you know, we're rather than pause and be in the spirit. You know, I think we're going to talk about this. Is is learning the life of self control, controlling yeah. our mouth yeah, and all exactly. of the things. And this is uh, this is a timely prophetic word right. because right now the temptation. Jesus said. Before the end comes, there'll be a great falling away. That means to fall away, you had to be in. That's right. And the, That's good. And the reality is, is if we don't learn mm -hmm. the, the life of the spirit, we will go down with the tide of the culture. That's we'll right. We'll go downstream with it. Well, and we have to watch this right now. We do have to watch it. And here's why you have to watch it. She said something very powerful about the devil, you know, and how he's operating to try to get you out of the life of the spirit trip you up so you can't walk in the spirit. Come on, you you know, think about it. Somebody posts something that you don't agree with and right away, man, you got to let everybody know, you know, why they're wrong. Well, you just got tripped up in the walk of the spirit. And, and if you're not careful, you're going to get over into the flesh yep. and you're going to get out of the, the spirit exactly walk right. and the life of the spirit. Why do you think, to Brenda's point, that Satan came to Jesus who had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and says to him, if you be the son of God, turn these stones to bread. You ever thought about that? Turn these stones to bread. Because the enemy, when it comes to the life and the walk in the spirit, because that's what Jesus was, man. He was in the spirit. He, you, you know, you're fasting 40 days and 40 nights. You're, you're in the spirit, man. Right. And he resisted his flesh. He resisted temptation. But think about it. Why did Satan say, if you're the son of God, turn these rocks uh, into bread? Because the enemy is the one that always wants to alter your spiritual walk and your spiritual appetite. That's great. He did it with the children of Israel. They weren't satisfied with manna. Come on. The stones, so to speak, what God established, what God provided, and instead turn it to something else, quail, flesh. He was trying to alter Jesus's hunger that he had 40 days and 40 nights to be with the Father and to walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit and alter it by going the flesh route of bread. That was to satisfy his flesh. And the enemy is always after you to change your appetite from spiritual That's hunger right. for God, yes. spiritual hunger Absolutely. or thirst for the Lord or walking in love, walking in forgiveness. Come on, walking in peace. He wants to change it and make it fleshly. That's what the bread represents. And Jesus had to pull it back and say, man will not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's not by fleshly appetites, lust. No, it's by the spirit spiritual stuff that God gives us that shows us how to walk and live in the spirit. So let's look at Jesus. Yes. The first thing that Jesus did, looking unto Jesus, is he walked in faith. And, and this is important because in Mark chapter four, we'll just kind of reference this. In verses 37, and you can, you can read uh, through verse 41, Jesus gets in a boat and there arose, it says in verse 37, a great storm, waves beat into the ship, it was a pretty, you could say, winds, contrary winds were absolutely causing fishermen who had been out in the lake many, many times before to now fear for their life. And so they woke up, they, 
they, they, they or not woke up. They woke up Jesus and said, man, don't you care that we're perishing out here, Jesus? And Jesus woke up and notice he didn't give in to the fear. He didn't give in to, you know, the flesh. He stayed in the spirit. And one of the ways to live and walk in the spirit is to maintain faith. You're yes, not wigged out right, by what's right. happening in the economy. Yes. You're not wigged out by what they're speaking over the news. You simply maintain a, a position of, I trust God at all times. I, I have authority so over the so devil. Good. And he rebuked the sea, he rebuked the wind, and then he rebuked his disciples because they were not walking in the spirit. They went to the place of the flesh and he had to get them right back where they needed to be. So you have to live a life of faith. And in fact, the Bible says this, and that's Jesus, our example. He never wigged out on no. anything that happened, okay? He, he never uh, got into his flesh. He never doubted God. He never doubted his father, never doubted his words. Okay, that's, so that's powerful. He, I love the fact that he didn't react. He didn't he react. Was, you know, I was thinking, too many of us are reactionary, and that's why we, we're not. We don't live in the spirit. Okay, things set us off. Right. You hear something. Oh, I'm afraid. Uh, we start attacking prophecies. Attack the prophets. We start attacking God's word. Oh, see that stuff doesn't work. You know, you quit going to church. Right. That's exactly what you don't want to do if you want to live and walk in the spirit. Well, Jesus, you think about how he was just so cool about that's this this he, reflected he, faith. He, man, when they brought him cool, the, the demon-possessed boy. Yeah. And here the devil throws himself down in front of Jesus. Matthew 17, Mark 9, just throws yeah, he's a drama. himself down, puts on this drama. And Jesus just turns and looks at the dad and said, so how long has he had this? <laughs> Just I, that always just moved me. <laughs> it's kind of like know. in uh, Charlie Brown. He has a sign that doctor's in. You know, and he was <laughs> so, just, that's funny. he didn't react. He didn't, uh, didn't you know, react. suddenly, you yeah. know, do it. He didn't do anything. Cool. He just recalculated yeah. and walked in the spirit. But Brenda, you and I have been around for a long time. I mean, we, I've been saved since 1984. You were 80, Two. 82. The, the most incredible spiritual people that I've ever met they're not wigged out people. No. Christians that are always wigged out and react to everything. And you know how you can tell, I read comments on the social media sites. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, I'm so afraid. You know, when all these mandates were coming, we kept saying, they're lying to us. They're lying to us. Don't do what they're asking. These aren't laws. These are mandates. People caved in and they got out of the life and the walk of the spirit. And, and, and it's usually those that are calm in the spirit you're not gonna be wigged out by the things that are going on. There are Christians that yeah. still are afraid to go back to church I know. and be out in public because and still they're wearing afraid. masks that don't work, folks. Yeah. Can we just say it? They don't work. Even the CDC is telling you that all their stupid scam demic pandemic that we kept saying didn't work. It was a joke. It was a lie. They know it. They lied to you. But it pulled the church out of the spirit and got them in the flesh. That's true. And it showed you how weak we were. It did. It did. Because we reacted more to yes, the fear exactly. than we stood in faith. Now you wonder why when Jesus says when he returns, they're going to find any faith. And, and in order to find faith, you got to have people walking in the spirit and living in the spirit. Yes, so, absolutely. And we are. It says in Hebrews eleven six, without faith, it's impossible to please yes. God. So if you want to be a person of the spirit, living in the spirit, don't be getting wigged out <laughs> and afraid. And don't be Mr. and Mrs. Reactionary. Okay. Yep. You know, I just want to say to Christians anymore, are we just even nice? You right. know, it's true. <laughs> no, we're fleshy. We get mad at the drop of a hat. Amen. That's right. Amen. Pastor <laughs> Hank. Okay. <laughs> okay. The second thing about Jesus, and uh, this is a good one. Uh, the life of what he lived and walked in the spirit is because he, he maintained his love walk. Yes. Okay. He maintained his love walk. The Bible says that God is love. First John 4, 8. Jesus said in John 14, 9, look, man, if you've seen me, you've seen my dad, you've seen my, my father, okay? Jesus not one time got out of the love walk. He maintained love. Now, love is not mushy, gushy, conforming, um, how do I say it, uh, accepting anything and all things go because we are, you know, walking in love. You know, when they used to right. say that, 
it's, it's such a lie. Are you ready? When, when, yeah, Obama said, uh, love wins. Obama, you need to get educated. Okay, because what you were saying, love wins, was no, what you're trying to do is license something that God did not define as what marriage is defined by. And we're just supposed to accept everything because love wins. No, no, no. And it's not hate to stand up for what God has said in Scripture and speak the truth in love. That's right. Okay, Walking in love is, is it, let me say it this way. There's two commands. Number one, you've got to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you love God, then you keep his commandments. And if God has said that uh, marriage is between one man and one woman, it's not that you hate anybody. You love them, but you have to go with what God says because you love him first. It's his way. It's Yahweh, not your way. Right. It's so important. It, 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 these people that are gender confused, gender, really they're not gender confused, they're gender bound, okay? It's an evil spirit that's right. binding up the minds of these people, that's making them reprobate, okay? God said that he created male and female. Love, that's, that's, that's loving God is being able to tell somebody, listen, I'm not gonna be part of your imaginary world. If you wanna dress up and you're a dude and think you're a woman, I'm not, I'm not joining your imagination. I'm not joining uh, what you're bound by. I'm going to speak the truth in love and tell you that God didn't create you that way. Right. And here's another thing. Love also says, listen, you're not allowed to exploit our children when you dress up and act like you're some uh, drag queen. Right. Okay, it's not acceptable. Right. So, so love isn't just mushy gushy and, and 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 conforming. Love stands up for God and what He said and what He demands and the moral standard and compass that He has established. Then it says the greatest commandment after that is you love others as you do yourself. So, you know, even though these people may be doing certain things, you still love them and you tell them the truth and you show them the better way. That's right. Okay. Well, let me. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just make sure. one comment about that. You know, we often quote speaking the truth in love. We, sure. we quote that so much, mm -hmm. but I think it's important to sometimes we em we place all the emphasis on the love part of that scripture. That if we got to do things in love, and love wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know. Um, make anybody feel bad. Love wouldn't, you know, make anybody feel called out or anything like that. And 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 there's a balance to how we go about that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we we lower in that verse the speaking the truth part of it. That's that good. notice it says speaking the truth first, and then it says do it with an attitude of love. And you quoted the fact that we're to love others the way we would mm -hmm. love ourselves. So you know if, if you're going to speak the truth about something. You do it in such a way how you would want somebody to talk to you. So that is the key. But we sometimes take a big eraser to the speak the truth part and think that we're loving people by eliminating the truth and the, the bare truth and the honesty of the, the way the word of God lays things out. And I think, Hank, we need to bring back an emphasis in the church right now, because I think it's been a little out of balance much of the mm -hmm. time. You know, a lot of yeah. things get avoided in the pulpits. Right. You know, people won't want to talk about things like hell and sin mm -hmm. and all of these things. And I, and I get it. That shouldn't be every week. But the fact of the matter is, is the speak, the, the love portion has become so out of balance that we don't want to say anything that we think might be offensive to somebody. We don't want to talk about speaking in tongues on a Sunday because there might be somebody there that wouldn't like it. So we've but emphasized the love portion so much that it has become a compromise mm -hmm. and we've eliminated much of the time in the church the speaking the truth. But the speaking the truth in that verse is first. That's right. It's well, first. speak the truth. And the reason why people don't want to hear the truth or they don't speak the truth is because they're not walking in the spirit. They're not living in the spirit. You know, they're allowing the culture, they're allowing trends. Come on, they're allowing the relevant pastors and churches that are now social clubs, trying to be so much subcultural, whatever the culture is, that's what we're gonna be because we're trying to reach the culture. And that's not what Jesus said. He said, you're not of the world. You're, you're right. countercultural. So the reason why they can't even recognize the truth, stand for the truth, speak the truth, is because they are so absorbing in the flesh the lies the culture, right? They're becoming like the carnal culture 
of the flesh. They don't even know what it is anymore of how to walk and live in the spirit. So therefore, when the truth comes, they think you're a bigot. They side with evil. They side with, with redefining words to support someone's woke agenda. I mean, think about all of this. And the church has absorbed so much exactly. of this. And you know, we often say holiness isn't makeup and hairdo. And I get that. But at the same point, sometimes it's it it can be because we've taken on so mm, much of the true. ideologies and the styles and the ways of the world that we don't look any different. You know, so if they're gonna come out with, you know, you wear, you know, five earrings in your nose and um, you know, all these piercings and different things that people do. And I'm not trying to get off on that, but sometimes we are taking on ideologies of the world. And I believe we're not only to have a different attitude than the world, we're to look different than the world. We well, shouldn't, you know, you talk about modesty and yeah, all of right. these things that are life of the spirit. And I think sometimes we try so much, so much of the mm -hmm. church is tried to be relevant and like the world mm -hmm. in effort to reach them that they can't even tell that we're well, believers. Think, think about all the churches today, how, why we're not, we're not churches. A lot of us are going to churches that are not real spirit filled spirit life how to walk in the spirit how to live in the spirit type churches you know why when coffee which is to satisfy your flesh is celebrated and the drawing card more so than the spirit of god speaking right. in tongues signs wonders and miracles you are going to a flesh church when your pastor stands up and he's afraid to get involved in, in politics or speak about the truth of what's going on in our country, okay, you're going to a flesh church. And here's why. When that pastor has to stand up every week and look like the world, act like the world, dress like the world, come on. The biggest thing that uh, a lot of uh, pastors started doing is all of a sudden everybody has to dress a certain way. And I'm not, I'm not here to preach about markings on your body, but all the pastors had to go out and get, you know, ink on their arms and their, and, and God got to look just like the world. I'm not here to say there's Christian this and there's Christian ink and there's non-Christian. The point is because you don't go the way of the spirit, all that speaks of is that you're going the way of the flesh and not the way of a walk in a life of spirit. It's a pastor, style. Yeah, right. You're, you're so trying to be relevant to the culture. My question is how much are you pastoring your congregation to live a life of, 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 of sanctification, a life where they hear you pray? When you get up at the end of praise and worship, you're not like, hey, let's go to the announcements. Man, you're teaching them how to touch God. You, by your example, are talking to the Father so that they know how a man of God touches the heart of God to where the people That's in the good, congregation man. are like, hey, man, I don't want to be like the world. I want to be like that pastor. I want to be like the way that he gets with God. He speaks with God. God comes when that man or woman steps on that platform. God meets him. Why? What is it about the pastor? They did it with Moses. They used to watch on, Moses good, go into the tent of meetings. To meet with God. It wasn't about wow. how he dressed. If he had all the earrings, the hair, the, 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 the ink. It was about his, his spiritual walk and life with God that made the people stand in awe. I don't stand in awe with most of the preachers that I see today. And I'm not anti-preacher. I just feel like there's a point where we've got to make God be what we are right. hungering and thirsting You're for. You're speaking. Because we're people who live in the spirit and walk in the spirit. And not just giving nice little messages that have no anointing and power upon it. Boy, you want to get me stirred up. Yeah, right. I'm well, stirred up. it is not of the spirit. And, 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 you because know, we're letting the culture define everything because we're not people walking in the spirit, living in the spirit. And, and a lot of the gospel yeah. today isn't spiritual. It's become a self-help coach, right? You know, a coaching session where we're coaching people how to, and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. The Bible coaches us, but a lot of the ways the Bible coaches us is different. Mm -hmm. It's not self-indulgent. It's very self-sacrifice. Jesus That's said, true. Jesus wrote such hard words words that sometimes in our modern society, we don't like to hear like a man cannot even be my disciple unless he crucifies That's right. his own flesh. We talked about flesh. That's a man flesh. though that said that, that walked in the spirit and lived in the spirit. This is what I'm talking and he about. He said, unless you crucify, take up your cross and deny yourself. I mean, those are scriptures that 
that aren't popular in any pulpit. I'm just mm-hmm. going to tell you, people don't want to hear self-denial in this current culture. You know, when the, the scripture talks about um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days perilous times shall come, and the very first thing he says right. that, that Paul says to Timothy is, men or and women too, shall be lovers of themselves. So no wonder the, the congregations and churches are crying out for pastors Brenda, to do, you know, help me no, pastor, build me pastor, show me pastor. Right. And and there there is a point to building up because right. you know, I've often said it, the Bible is a mixture of build me up scriptures and correct me scriptures. We need both. We but need both. The correct me side, the self-denial side, has been almost absent that's in why the modern people nature. But it's why they're not walking in the spirit. It's why they're not living in the spirit. It's why people are satisfied going to churches where, where God is not moving. Because they are not living. If you were a person that was really walking in the spirit and living in the spirit, you would never be satisfied with a boring church. Come on, another dry sermon, a motivational message a social club experience without encountering God. Those who walk in the spirit and live in the spirit want God. They want his presence. They don't care how long the worship is. They don't care how long the preaching is if God is there. And if it's bringing them to a place where they are being challenged to live a life in the spirit and not in the flesh. You know what what gets me is, you know, I was uh, hearing people talking about, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's churches now that are just opening up where you can now have, you know, popcorn and uh, they're putting, you know, reclining seats in and stuff where you can come to church and and have popcorn. And I'm serious and have a little drink. Some are allowing, you know, booze to come in, uh, you know, and and, and basically having a, 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 you know, not just a coffee bar, but let's have an alcohol bar here. Those are churches that are Ichabod. You need to get out. And they're saying, oh, they're some of the fastest growing. Yeah, because they're t- catering stones to bread. The enemy is changing the appetite and how churches look and what they're supposed to be offering. And and, and we're and, and there's a culture of Christians that are and preachers that are buying into it. Right. No, it, it's making us fleshy. It's not teaching us how to walk in the spirit. Here's another one. Well, you know, we can just hang out, you know, with a bunch of sinners. Some of my closest friends are sinners because I'm trying to reach them. The problem is they say Jesus hung around with sinners. Yeah, he hung out with the sinners in the sense of this. He walked in the spirit. He lived in the spirit. He never, ever did what they were doing in the flesh. That's right. The problem with people who have that mentality or their evangelistic program is that. I knew preachers, Brenda, that were promoting people going into strip clubs to, to preach the gospel. Okay, well, we're we're not alone. We're reaching those people. No, you're 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 well, you're going to sit in the parking lot okay, and reach them after they re- walk right, out. That's exactly right. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. But can stuff. I say this about Jesus with the sinners? He, he that wasn't all the time. No, it wasn't all the time. We make it out as if that was his norm. And he lived an incredible life of the spirit. Yes, he did. Walking in the spirit, living in the spirit. The problem is, look at where the church, what it's been reduced to, where the elder brother spirit of Eliab. Uh, that confronted David, okay, who was a man of the spirits, why God chose him, is, you know, Eliab is rebuking David when David would be called today uh, a, a nationalist. You know, David was standing up for God, standing up for his country. Mm, standing up for what's right. Right, and here's what Eliab did. Oh, you naughty boy, you have a prideful heart. Well, Eliab, you're fleshy. You can't even recognize the spirit of God on David, a man after God's heart, a man who wanted to, to live and walk in the spirit. And what did David do? He got out of the walk of, of the spirit and the life of the spirit. And he committed adultery with Bathsheba and different things. And it, it destroyed his kingdom. The way of the flesh, walking that way is never going to make your life successful. That's but right. think about what Eliab did, what a lot of people do today. Go the way of the flesh. And, and it's the reason our country, people aren't, Christians aren't doing what they need to by speaking up and speaking out. And yet more and more flesh just keeps being thrown at our culture, at our kids, at our schools, come on, in our curriculums. It's true. And and somewhere, you know, I guess it's like this, you know, those of us that are standing up, it's because we walk and live in the spirit. We are recognizing that true freedom comes where the spirit of the Lord is, there is true liberty. And in in order to drive the evil out of our country, 
is gonna require some spiritual people who live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, and can call evil, evil, and can call good, good, and recognize the difference between good and evil, holy and profane. And it's very distinct. Right, no, not, not this gray area. That's why Jesus said, man, I'll vomit people out of my mouth if they are gray, if they're lukewarm, okay? Because it's pulling them out of the life and the walk of the so spirit. So powerful. You know? This is the word man. Of I the feel Lord. the anointing very strong this in this show today. Lord. And and I and I've been preaching, you know, in the church on honor. Um, and 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 I and I started realizing what what why is this culture like it is? Because the church is emulating it. Yeah. And 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 a lot of Christians. So are we're not putting into out it. any pushback. We're not we're just the, letting right. the culture. That's right. You know, and and I've heard this said before, but it's it, we're seeing the culture influence the church rather than the other way around. It it's should true, be the other, we should be the influencers. We should That's be the right. ones. And realize if we're gonna do that, Jesus said it. He said the world's gonna hate you. Mm-hmm. Just they hated me. The servant isn't above his master. And if they hated me, they're gonna hate you. Because why? Because you walk in the spirit and That's you true. bring a, a a conviction or a pushback to the agenda of wickedness. Mm-hmm. And I think um, if anything the church does where God is, what I feel like the message the Lord is saying today is that we have to start becoming the enforcers of what's right. That's right. And That's and how you walk in the spirit. We are to be a cut the above the That's world, right. not look like That's the right. world. That's and right. I think that is so very necessary mm-hmm. so that it's distinctive who we are and where we stand. Exactly. It's clear. The message is clear. And can I tell you another thing? It's why, like with Brenda and I, you know, I I want people to look at us as people and look at our marriage and say, you know what? I want to be like that, or that's real, that's genuine. Well, because my goal and Brenda's goal is to walk in the spirit and live in the spirit to be the countering of all this fleshy stuff that is getting the stamp of approval by congregations, Christians, churches, and unfortunately, the culture. You know, I was just uh, in a place the other day and they asked me a question. They said, hey, how's the building uh, coming, uh, you know, that you guys are doing at, at Lord of Hosts? And I said, oh, it's going great. And uh, they, they said, well, what's it gonna look like? And I, you know, showed a picture. They said, oh, well, we're, we're, we're gonna do a building program at our church too, but, you know, we are not going to make our church look like a church. That's what all the board and the experts said is you will scare people because I showed them, you know, we're going to put a cross up on our a cross. Oh, God forbid you put a cross on a church building. Oh, my gosh. You don't want to show a cross. Are you kidding me? Blood was put on a cross. Jesus is. I don't worship the cross, but it's a symbol of what my Savior did. That's right. And it's a reminder to the devil what Jesus did. I don't worship. I don't put a crucifix. I'm not talking about that. I want the whole world to know what, this is that a there's, a, there's, a, there's a church. That's right. And so I said to this person, I said, I, 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 I started thinking to myself, oh, there's a lot of things that I could say right now. And I just felt like the Lord said to me, Hank, I'm going to teach you something where this person's wrong. And so I just loved him and I said, you know what? I said, that might be for what you and your leadership feels to do, but it's certainly not what we're gonna do. I could go, I could have gone there, I could have schooled them, I could have corrected them, but then I'm getting out of the spirit, I'm getting out of the spirit walk. And it wasn't a place where they even had any authority to, to make any difference. And I didn't wanna make division in their church. But here's what the Lord showed me. He said, Hank, he said, really? When the Queen of Sheba in 2 Chronicles chapter 9 came up to the house of Solomon, she had a secular spirit in her. Yes. She came, the Bible said she came to prove him with hard questions. Yes, in did. other words, you're, you're, a, you're, 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 you're trying to build a mega church. <laughs> all this that people are saying now, all mega churches are, they're all dirty, they're all evil, they're all, uh, come on. Don't go to heaven then. That's gonna be the mega church of all. Okay, it's not like right. just because a mega church is a mega church that that right. pastor's dirty. The the okay, stop it. There's even small churches that are that way. Yeah, they just the, don't get any news time. They don't get any news time. <laughs> the, the the point is, again, we get over into flesh and pointing the finger. Oh, that person's guilty. That person's guilty. 
Point the finger on you. Are you walking in the spirit? That's are you good, living Pastor. in the spirit? That's good, now, Pastor. I'm not saying that there are some people that need to be held accountable. That's between them and God. God will always hold the preachers accountable. Okay, he didn't let Eli get by with stuff. He didn't let uh, uh, Hophni and Phinehas, his sons, get by with stuff. Yeah, right. He's not gonna let the other preachers that are living in the flesh like that get by with it either. The point is, you know, I, I, I looked at the, the Queen of Sheba. And, and I was going to say to that person, uh, it looked like a church. It was a representative, the temple of God, of what would ultimately be That's us, good. the That's temple so of God, good. and how much God valued us, okay? But it was also how God values his church building to look, the excellence that should go with his church building. The Queen of Sheba came in 2 Chronicles 9. She came with a harsh spirit. She had a lot of hard questions, and because it looked like the church that God wanted built. Guess what happened? The Bible says there was no more spirit in her. She saw all the decorations. She saw all the beauty of what the Lord, yeah, yeah, God was elaborate. And the other thing and it, is- It looked distinct. I it looked think that distinct. Jesus that's the key. said it this way. He said, we are a city set on, set a, on hill a hill. That's right. That cannot be hid. That's so right. why are we trying to hide that it's a church? Why are we trying to hide that- we're a Christian. Why are right. we trying to look? That's why I think this whole relevant idea because it's just relevant, doesn't go with the scripture. Because relevant, Brenda, is not walking in the spirit, living in the spirit. It's again pulls you into the flesh. You know, for that so whole thing, light, you're hiding your yeah, light. yeah. Like you just said, when you're when you're the city set on a hill, okay. Everybody needs to know distinctively, just like the house of Solomon. Hey, that's the church. That's why I. Uh, when all the different dress codes were coming out for pastors, right? They call them dress codes. You know, you could no longer wear a suit. God forbid if you dressed up on Sunday. No, now you got to, you know, wear, you know, the, the flip flops and shorts now. And the pastor comes out with a Y50 Magnum PI shirt. Or muscle, we're shirt. muscle shirts and right. tight pants and that don't look appropriate and so on and so forth. And you know what I'm talking about. And then we just look like, you know, the, the, the world and we're standing up because we're, we're Pastor Cool. But Pastor Cool, are you a man of the Spirit? Are you teaching your people to walk in the Spirit? How fleshly is your congregation? You know how you can tell? By what they believe, what they stand for and what they don't stand up for. That's it. That's how you can tell. Yeah. You come to Lord of Hosts Church and our people know what's right and what's wrong, because I tell them from the Scripture. I had a guy say this the other day. I'm on a rant, I tell you. <laughs> it's good though. We need this. Well, but here's the thing. So we I heard a this. I heard a preacher the other day. He was preaching on, you know, uh, I don't get involved in in uh, what's going on in the culture. I don't get involved with what's happening in the economy. I don't get involved with what's happening in the politics. You are not here to hear my opinion. You are here to hear what I preach from the word of God. And the place stood up and started clapping him. And I thought, wait a minute. No, as a man who walks in the spirit and lives in the spirit and spends time with God, I'm not only supposed to give you the word, but I'm also supposed to give you my opinion about things according to the word of God. Okay? Do you realize that in my sermons, it is not just the word of God I'm preaching. It is also filled with my opinions. Is that safe yes, to say yes. that? So your opinions, Every one of us, it's like Right. That. So your viewpoints, your, your arguments, okay, your opinions should be based off of two things. Are you a man of honor or a dishonor? Are you a person who walks and lives in the spirit? If you walk and live in the spirit, when you do give your opinions about things, it'll be spirit led. It'll be spirit led. It'll be truth. It'll be right. That's it'll be according good. to the scriptures. Yeah. Yep. Well, and if we don't get involved in the culture from the word of God, who then is going to be the enforcers exactly. of uh, what pushback is there against anything Amen. the devil wants to do in society? If Amen. we don't get involved and teach our congregations to get involved in our schools and exactly. in the culture and in society, well, then who is stopping the devil's agenda? I mean, it's the church. We can't leave mm -hmm. that up to the secular right. conservatives if, if that's a thing. We can't do that. So it's us who are the enforcers. It was the apostles Paul that stood on Mars Hill and and, and confronted their witchcraft. Mm -hmm. He stood up there and said to 
the people. You're too superstitious. And they burned all their books yeah, and their artifacts right. and their magic spell equipment. But Paul walked he, in the spirit. He because lived he was in the a spirit. man of the spirit. He, right. he was the same apostle in Acts 13, 13 that confronted the deputy's assistant, mm -hmm. the sorcerer, and commanded him to That's go right. blind. And I'm not suggesting we do that, but I'm just saying Paul did that. No, we're the too nice. Is, what it is, is, is we're too nice towards evil. He, Paul yes, didn't put we're up soft with it. on evil. You're soft right. That's evil. a good way to this yeah. walking in the spirit. And I think, you know, God is speaking to all of us that we need to pull back and evaluate that, you know, because it, Jesus, if you think about this, this is, and this is why Hank and I are so passionate on this point is Jesus, when you read Matthew 24, all of the scriptures about end mm -hmm. times, which a lot of people are reading right now, but if you read that, Hank, Jesus said something so important on multiple occasions, I think like three or four times, he said, take heed that no one deceives you. Why? Because it, right sure. now, the culture has made the gospel seem so watered down. It's all milky. It's all kind of a blend of it something. Is. And where there isn't a separation, and yet the Bible that we read is filled with things about be separate, come out from among them and be separate, Amen. says the Lord, 2 Corinthians. It says, be separate, and then I will receive you. God right. is looking for us to separate and have a clear line of demarcation mm -hmm. from the world's ways, the world's attitudes, the world's mm -hmm. styles, the Amen. world's um, uh, belief systems, their ideologies. We're supposed to be so different right. that when people come to God, it won't be based on, well, I'm going to come be a Christian because it works for mm -hmm. me. No, they're going to come to a place of desperation where they want to come yeah, to the altar good. because they're, like you said earlier in the program, they're, they just, they're done with flesh. That's, they want to come to mm -hmm. a place where there's the spirit of God, Amen. there's the anointing. Right, they don't want that flesh anymore. So when people are done with flesh, they don't want to come to relevant mm -hmm. Christian center. They want to mm -hmm. come to a place where it's different than what they've had all their right. life. Right. And I believe that's what's going to usher in the last great right. revival, the great awakening is people who are driven and yeah, live exactly. in the spirit and it's obvious mm -hmm. in their life. And, and I guess that's why I'm so passionate right now and I'm so passionate on this program. You might think, well, you know, Hank, you're 56 years old and you know, you just, you know, got stuff in your craw. I, I've joked about that, but, but in all seriousness, no. I have served my Lord and my God since 1984, okay? I'm coming on 40 years almost of walking with God, being intimate with God, giving my whole life to please him, to honor him, to love him, to do what he says. Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, don't call me Lord if you're not willing to do what I say. And, 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 and I've lived a life, same with you, Brenda, where you know people would say, well, you guys are too radical you know, in the, in the early years of our, our walk and our ministry. And yet I would watch them and I think, okay, they're calling me too radical. But yet when I look at their life and what they're saying is acceptable, I'm not judging them. Jesus said, you can look at someone's life mm -hmm. and judge their fruit. I'd be like, well, why do they, why do they think that that's okay to act that way, talk that way, or some of the things that they would, you know, entertain or, or bring into their home for entertainment or go to the movie screens and, and watch uh, by ways of entertainment. They all thought that it's good, yet I'm, I'm considered the radical one. But I realized something. It's because there's a, a war, Galatians 5, the flesh yes. against the spirit. That's, That's so what the scripture That's says. That's and I chose since 1984 with this girl when I married her in 1989, Brent and I set ourselves to be people who will absolutely do our best before God to walk in the spirit, to live in the spirit. And when you live that way and, yes. and, and it becomes your life, it becomes your walk, you will look at things of the flesh and it's like, I don't even want it. You know, it, it's amazing to me uh, how people, Brenda, will talk about just even Christian entertainment or things that Christians do to satisfy their flesh by way of entertainment. I'm not going to get into specifics because I'm not here for you to pick apart whether you think it's right or not. But come on, you know what is flesh and what isn't. But but my biggest argument, and it's always what what we, we used to have through the years, music, uh, musicians, music, musicians come in 
And they would all want to play what they heard all the secular music play when we first started, you know, and, 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 and all of that. And then they started wanting to sing songs that were, you know, Christian songs, but they never pulled you into the presence of God. And I, and I appreciated Pastor Christie and then later Shane, who she married, who would stand up and say, you know what? Why can't we as Christians get before God, get an anointing on us and let God give us our own sound that comes from the spirit, comes from heaven, give us our own words. We don't need to learn always from the world's way. And I feel like it's, it, it's, it's like even with cartooning and what I'm doing with cartooning. I don't want to look at all the things that the world is doing right. to try to get my inspiration. I want That's to walk good. in the spirit, live in the spirit, be with God who is the creator in the spirit and let him give us inspiration that's, that's different than the world. I guess I, what I'm saying passionately and maybe I'm not doing a good job is I'm, I, I guess I'm at a place of righteous indignation and jealousy for God that I'm tired of preachers and churches and Christians defending so much of the world, carnality and flesh and think that it's approved of God. That's good, Hank, though. We have to hear that. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's made us a wishy-washy, compromised, and even, I hate to say it, sinful people. And yet I look and I think, man, the preacher that stands up and says, you know what? Repent. The preacher that stands up and says, how does God feel about that? Or the preacher that stands up and says, you know what? I'm going to open my mouth for the sake of this country is now ridiculed and called a Christian nationalist because they love God and love their country. They're tired of the flesh. They're tired of the evil. They're tired of the culture being pushed on the church. They're tired of preachers that'll stand up there and ignore what God said and and and, and marry uh, against traditional marriage. And we let that get creeped into our church because we're trying to reach people. I think somewhere we got to raise the standard. And I think the way that we do it is you walk in the spirit you live in the spirit and you will recognize the difference between yes, good and good. evil, right. holy and profane. And you won't be this religious bigot. I'm not talking about that or this religious stuck up person. Yeah, right. You'll have a way about you that will be pleasing to God and attractive to others that they will say, wow, these men have spent time with Jesus. That's what I want to be said of Christianity today. There's something different. What is this about Jesus? Man, we want to be like you. But when you're trying so hard to be like the culture, they'll never say that about you. Yeah, right. You know, I want to, you know, I walked in a place the other day, Brenda, and I'm not trying to brag, but I walked in a place, we're going to bring this to a close. And um, the person said to me, this was several months ago, they said, man, they, they were just talking to a group of people. And they said, man, when you walked in, what is it, wh- what is it about you? you? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, you brought so much energy, I guess is what we would call it. You know, they don't know what it is. It's the presence of God. They said the whole room just changed. And I thought to myself, God, that's what I want. I want to walk in the spirit and I live in the spirit, but I want to carry the tangible presence of God that people say, Mm. you know, you almost convinced me like, uh, who is that one that Paul preached? With Apostle Paul, right. You, You almost convinced me to be a Christian. What is it about you? What do you have that I don't have? You know, what is it about the standard that you have? That's why on social media, I am one of these ministries. I don't let people come and barf their flesh on my social media page. If you can't walk in the spirit, if you can't live in the spirit, if you can't act uh, in the fruit of the spirit and, 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 and comment correctly and write, and you bring that spirit, goodbye. We got to pull this thing back for the sake of what Jesus is coming back for. You can throw all your eschatology scriptures at me that it's Gog, Magog, Mm -hmm. Ukraine, China, Russia, eggnog, you know, or whatever you want to do. But, but the truth of the matter is the church right now, and I'm not saying this to hurt God. I'm saying this because I believe that he feels the same way. Right now, much of his church is divided, argumentative, fleshly. Dishonorable, right? Lazy, not spiritual, not walking in the flesh or, or walking in the spirit. This isn't an escape mission. The scripture says he's coming for a church without spot. That's right. Without blemish and without yes, wrinkle. And that is those that are walking and living in the spirit. And then it says he's coming back for a glorious church. 
That is a church walking in the spirit. And that's why I feel so passionate on this today. I really do, Brenda. Well, I feel like. Uh, from the Lord today. I feel like, so. and I just sense this right now that you're watching. And I, I feel like the people Thank connecting you, to this broadcast, this service, you're doing it because you you feel that way. You're yeah. like, God, Amen. we've got to pull this. And I believe it's going to take all of us as an army as a people of God, it starts as a person, as an individual, and then it, it it's us as a church. You know, that's our passion here at Lord of Hosts Church, but it should be all of Amen. us. And I really believe this is something I want to encourage us tonight to really pray along these lines that God, let us be the light that will help bring a new standard to your people. And, and like Hank said, it's not in a self-righteous way or anything like that. That's not the point. But the point is, is when you recognize there's a lot of deception that has infiltrated That's the good, church. Brilliant. You know, the scripture says judgment has to begin at God's mm -hmm. house. And I think you're here because that is how you feel. Or maybe you realize, man, Pastor Hank, what you said, I've got to do some examining. We all do. We all mm -hmm. have to do Brenda that. Brenda and I included. Brenda Every and I, single one uh, of yes, us needs to look are. at our standard because Amen. so much has bled into the church. And I feel just, I want to pray this pray over you right yeah, now. That's beautiful. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we thank you. Your word says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after, watch this flesh but after the spirit. That's so right. Father, I pray that every person under the sound of my voice, you will raise their hunger for a new spiritual you, standard. And even if they are walking in the spirit, Father, we know there's always higher levels for us to attain to, to step into, to be hungry for, to desire. We can all grow. Yeah, and I'm you. asking you, Lord, teach us how to be people of the spirit and do it with taste and grace, but Thank not you, compromise. Amen. And if Thank there be you, any compromise in us, we ask you tonight, Lord, forgive us. forgive us, show us, reveal to us where we can make adjustments and changes because Lord, we do Thank believe you, you are coming back for a glorious church. And I Amen. just pray over the people right now and I say, whatever your need is, whatever you're dealing with Thank in you, your Lord. life, whatever you're facing, I believe God is gonna show you the answer He's going to show you how to get through it. He's going to show you how to overcome it. God's going to do that right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, you, and if Lord. there's anything that's between you and God, just get rid of it. You can repent Amen. of it. And guess what? God's going to come on the scene and he's going to bring you back to that. Thank and you, if Lord. you're backslid or you're away from God, just mm -hmm. repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I come home. Thank I'm you, home. And guess what? God is there for you. So I just speak a blessing over Thank you, you right now. And I say, Thank you are going to get to the place in God that is in your heart and God himself is going to bring you into total victory in Jesus name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. All right. Wow. Very good. Thank you for what praying for What a word them. tonight. Yeah. Just, oh my goodness. I know. And I'm so happy you ended it by praying for these. Precious yes. People. It's just a good word. Thank, thank you. Thank you yeah. I want to say for just being a bold voice and always yeah. standing up and just speaking the truth. And I think it's needed right now you know why, in this Brenda, church. Something is driving my heart. And I want to say it to you. I read in scripture uh, recently where the Bible says, God said about himself that he is a jealous God. Yes, he did. And I said to the, to, to the father at that point, I said, Father, I am on a uh, mission to discover what it really means that you are a jealous God. Mm. And if you're a jealous God, I am going to I'm going to ask you why, I'm going to discover why, but here's the thing. I am going to come to that level where I am jealous for you like you are jealous for what you've said, who you are and what you expect of yeah, us. That's good, that's good. And so I'm on a I'm on a journey to discover okay and I think if you understand that God is jealous, then you're going to want to know why. Well, God, why are you jealous? What are you jealous about? And and that's I think powerful. that uh, very good. That's where my passion is. Amen. You know, yeah. That's good. So. so, well, we're just about out of time. It is offering time, and they're going to put that giving information up on the screen. This is our normal Wednesday night, and as they're putting that up there, and you're grabbing a hold of your device, your phone. 
You'll see text to give information. There's the QR code to give to Lord of Hosts Church. Thank you everyone who is helping us with our property expansion project. And if you want to give toward that to help us purchase the 100,000 square foot building just adjacent to the church, which we are going to be closing on very, very soon, then I just want to make sure that you select property expansion right there on the drop down menu. And um, of course, continue to give to the building program. But I really believe right now 